Hello, I'm Grant. If you tuned into the last show, we made some homemade salsa with tortillas. And as is every recipe, I have tortillas left over, I have fruit left over. So I wanted to do something I would often make the next day, which is homemade burritos and just with some eggs and ham and some really nice, simple, small ones that are always kind of a joy to have the next day. So that's what we're gonna be making today on Second Plate. So I'm going to start with scrambling three eggs. So I'm just going to crack them into this bowl right here. I remember being a kid and just learning how to crack an egg. And you just slowly get better and better as the years go by. But it wasn't until I worked at a job where I had to cook eggs for breakfast that you really like get a form going. Like I know the head chef that worked there or cook had this perfect strategy of being able to hit it just with a metal ladle, just like crack it really finely. And that was always something I wish I could do, but I never actually was able to get. So I'm gonna salt my eggs. It helps with consisting a little bit. I'm just gonna put a little bit in, but ideally you want to get this in early so it kind of mixes. And I'm just going to whisk my eggs, piercing the yolk and then just going around. I am going to be scrambling these eggs, so I'll be adding a little bit of milk, it makes them fluffier. No real amount here, but I just kind of wing it because, to be honest, if I'm making this with milk, I usually have some left over and I want to use as much as possible. But it's not a big deal if you don't have it, but I just think it, it adds just a little bit of something. Okay, once it looks good, pretty good there. I'm going to go ahead and carefully get my whisk away and I'm going to prep my little grill here. Scrambled eggs are really so easy and if you've ever cooked eggs, you know that pretty much every other meal with eggs turns into scrambled eggs because you'll mess it up eventually. But it's kind of nice to be like, you know what, I'm actually gonna make it officially sometimes. So I'm going to turn this up a little bit. Not really hard, I imagine most people know how to do scrambled eggs, so I'm just gonna kind of keep turning up the heat on this a little bit as I go and pull it around. So breakfast burritos are very, very flexible. Generally, I always include eggs, that's the thing that makes it a breakfast burrito in my eyes, and then one choice of meat. So I have some leftover ham from, usually I'd just be making like sandwiches or something for lunch at work, and I'll be grilling that alongside this once the eggs kind of start to form up. So that's my choice. And I like lunch meats, even if it's not particularly breakfasty, because it lets you go kind of work with the rolling of the burrito. So it, whereas if I were to say use sausage, which is actually what we're gonna be doing on the next show, it can be a little bit hard to get that to stay in once you roll the burritos, but since sliced ham or turkey, if you wanna go something, a little bit lighter is so thin, you can get that as your nice flat base right when you're ready to start rolling and then you just kind of section off however much egg you want and it rolls pretty easily. You can still do it with other things, like bacon's not that hard either, but if I'm making breakfast burritos, usually that means I'm too lazy to cook bacon or anything else particularly crazy. Surprisingly, you think bacon's like the one of the classic breakfast foods, but I'm not that good at cooking bacon. Like I can do it. It is something that is in my realm of skill, but somehow I just really haven't mastered it. Been on a big a, a sausage kick instead. Plus, I have a lot of ham, and I feel like that's really nice to grill because you get that nice like caramelized stuff I'll bring up in a little bit. Cool. We're going to get nice lumps here, and then I'm going to toss in just some cheese. Again, no real amounts here because you can go as crazy on this as you want. The cheese doesn't add a lot of mass, but it adds some flavor. So if you want to keep folding and adding more cheese, just go for it. I think it's interesting how every time I cook eggs, I rethink what kind of spatula I use. Because sometimes you want like this really nice 
simple soft rubber spatula so I can just scrape all around, particularly with a metal skillet, you can just really get around the edges and it cleans up really nice. But other times, particularly if it's a little bit more of a sticky solution, then I want to go in with a nice like hard rubber one where you can kind of scrape it off or what have you. And one of the best experience with eggs, if you can get something like this that's nice and flat and you don't have to work with the roundness of a skillet, it really is just night and day. Like at that little kitchen where I would cook breakfast occasionally, they had just a massive flat griddle. And that was amazing because like you want to make an omelet, you just basically splat the eggs down, kind of put your ingredients in the center and you just neatly fold it. With a skillet, you have to kind of make it work and it always ends up vaguely bowl shaped which isn't an issue, but it's not quite what I want either. Cool. And you can, at this point, pull them off pretty much whenever, depending on how wet you like your eggs. I'll be honest, I, uh, as a kid, I'm someone who's into more of a dry scrambled egg, but after working out at that breakfast place, I was all into eggs over easy with, <laughs> honestly, just a lot of goop. like where it's cooked, but it's still nice and liquid. And that's how I feel about my scrambled eggs as well. Let me toss in some more cheese while I do this. So I'm putting on the ham just because what this does, other than making it not be cold ham in a warm burrito, is it caramelizes it, I believe is the term, and it makes it really sweet. Plus just kind of cooking these together is nice so that when you combine them, it tastes like they're combined, not, again, cold ham, with really hot eggs and, you know, it's an okay tortilla. And then for tortillas, what I would generally do is, I would often just warm them up, say, in the microwave, I'll put like a little cup of water, put those on for a couple seconds in there and they'll soften up and make it a little more pliable. But you can also do it on, say, the grill at a really low heat. You could do it probably in the oven, just a little bit of something so that they don't tear. You can, if you want, put other ingredients in these. I like to keep it fairly simple because that, it's breakfast. I don't want to be cooking a ton of ingredients because I probably just got up. Plus, one thing that's important to consider with a burrito before you start putting it together is a sandwich, you have an infinite amount of up space you can add to it. You can keep going up. With a burrito, it's a very finite section of stuff. So while you could theoretically add a ton of ingredients, you'll have to give up other things, and that's not always what you want to do. So that's why I usually say, I want one piece of protein, and then I'm going to do just eggs. But if you want to go something bigger, like get a really nice, huge tortilla, then you can go have a ton of fun with this. And the reason I wanted to make this with a salsa dish from the previous show is because you have the limited room and salsa just naturally goes with burritos, you don't have to put your, your onions, your garlic, your pepper, your salt necessarily in this because I'll dip it or scoop it onto the burrito. It's a nice little, I guess, trick around that where you can still get all the flavors you want without having to have a masterful burrito rolling skill. Cool. All right, so I'm gonna go and fish my eggs out. Now would be a great time if you wanna have a ton of salt or pepper to add these to the eggs because once they're in a burrito, it's a lot harder to do that. Although I am a huge fan of leaving them purposely kind of unseasoned and then instead seasoning with each bite, which is basically what the salsa does. So if you're saying, oh, I want a ton of tomato in this or I want this to be really spicy, put the peppers on as you eat it. Also, as with everything, I cook with like breakfast. I like dishes that scale really well. So like I can make this for myself with basically one egg or two, however much ham I want to include. But if I want to make this for a group of people, it's pretty easy to ramp it up and cook a huge selection of stuff. Plus, if I were to say do this for guests, I'd say generally people are good at rolling burritos. So I'll just say cook a bunch of ingredients. Everyone can kind of do what they want and go from there. You'll notice I'm going to kind of cut up this ham. It's nice if you want to go to the trouble of getting a long, thin slice to cook it like that, but I like it nice and shredded, so you get chunks, but it's still thin, versus like having a very thin layer spread out. That's not as much my 
take. But basically, I'm like kind of looking for is that brown around the edges. That's basically the tastiness, like right along here, around there. And you can cook this for as long as you want. That's another thing that's kind of nice is I could probably leave this on here for another five minutes. It's not going to hurt. So if I have to go, say, work on something else, I can come back and it, it's okay. Let me see if I have another. Nah, I'll just use this side over here. Cool, I'm just gonna go fish out my ham now and place it alongside more of my tortillas so I can start folding this. All right, so I just have some small, simple mission flour tortillas. You can use corn if you want, you can use larger. Going with the same theory of how burritos are very dependent on what you put in them and their mass, I know one thing I really like is, I know Mission makes basically flavored tortillas, particularly there's a great jalapeno one I really like because you can have like the spiciness of it and kind of the pepper without adding a ton to the burrito itself. You're not forcing out other ingredients so you can have one or two other things. So. I'm going to start from the center, laying out like this. Again, these are going to be kind of tiny, just because that's what I was going for. So I'm going to be putting just very a thin amount of ham in like that, starting from the center. I like to picture where there's essentially maybe a one inch wide gap, and about two inches, one inch deep, two inches wide, and that's kind of what's the pocket of the burrito. I'm going to toss in just a thin amount of eggs. I will be doing a, I guess what you, I'd call a sealed burrito, but if you want, you can go for more of a open taco look to it, which also works, but I find that depending on what you're cooking, you get a lot of juice that will just run out, whereas if you can make it a little bit thinner, and you make it a little bit more, and then it's just cleaner to eat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, I'm going to start on either side, and this is just something I've slowly picked up from experience. I'm going to flatten in like that so I have my rectangle. I'm going to take the two back corners of my rectangle, fold them in to make this little loop there, and that's my seal. And then I'm going to roll it. And this is a point that I think I didn't quite get at first, where not everything's going to stay in the pocket. You just kind of want to roll it along with the pocket to make these nice little small ones. And I like to just kind of hold it there to make sure it stays. Particularly if it's still warm, if you just take it a second where you're holding it, it will last so much better. And if you are having trouble keeping them closed, you can use cream cheese. It's something I don't usually have around, but it will keep them closed so long as they aren't too hot where they melt the cream cheese. Plus, it's breakfast, so I assume you have some around for like a bagel or something. And it's a nice little tip that I think isn't immediately apparent, and I know when I used to make these literally at that job and in my own life, I just could not keep them closed. It was, it's just difficult. I also like to do this on a cutting board because if you have trouble guessing how much goes, how much goes into one, I'll just keep a spatula on one hand and if I have say spillage of like an egg, you can just kind of like scoop that aside so you always end up with the right amount but it's on a clean surface so you can just keep reusing it. So I'm going to keep rolling. You can also feel free, I think this would be a good step to put in hot sauce, because again, that doesn't add a lot of mass to it. But since I'm going with salsa for my flavoring, I want to keep that on the outside. But yeah, you can basically use any kind of meat you'd want. The go-to would obviously be sausage, ham, you can do just egg, that's entirely fine. You can go probably, I'd say, entirely veggie. I have not personally done it, but anything you would think to put in an omelet, you can put in a breakfast burrito. So I know personally I go for more of a Denver omelet a lot of times, which is green peppers, ham, and then of course egg, maybe some onion. But 
you can get really crazy. You can get some like chorizo, you can get, say, <laughs> I don't know, something more exotic. You can go chicken. It'd feel a little odd for me to use chicken in a breakfast burrito, but hey, it's something where you can do whatever you like. I just personally happen to have a lot of ham around because it's a very easy thing to toss into other dishes. And I would say if you do like ham, like it's a whole nother thing to say transition from sliced ham to do diced, because that adds, I think, a lot more flavor, but it's a lot more difficult to get it to stay in the burrito, so it's a nice little thing. And obviously I guess bacon would be the other one to kind of toss in there. Just whatever you kind of feel like. And if you want a, a messier one, you can leave them open-ended. You can get more out of it. In particular, I would recommend rolling an open-ended one and then serving it with, say, like gravy or salsa and just putting it over the top. And even though it's a burrito, eating it entirely with a fork. It's just actually a pretty nice little thing where you keep it all together. But it still just adds a little bit something. I guess hollandaise sauce also would go pretty well with these. Be nice and simple. But I feel like hollandaise sauce is something where if I'm going to make that, I'm going to go for, I don't know, like, might as well make some crepes or something or just something fancy because that's much more difficult than these pretty easy breakfast burritos. And if they do start to leak, that's not at all an issue. But these are very visually appealing. They work really well if I were to have, say, relatives over. Because you can kind of just make a whole bunch up. You can make them really custom. And they just look really nice. So at this point, I would generally serve these. Or I would probably, honestly, eat them as I cook. And my goal is usually I would make a decently sized one about a foot long. That's my ideal tortilla, about 12 inches. And then the goal would be to serve it alongside with salsa with a spoon because you would say, take a bite, dish them in, kind of dial it in however you want, and it's overall a pretty nice little dish. <laughs>